You know, for a master in training, Ericus really didn't have good combat abilities when he was younger. Like, we were, as we were just sitting there talking, it was playing the movie, and it showed where he got his scar from. Yeah, he just didn't do anything. He just yeah, got no, shot. Just, he gets shot, and it's like, he has plenty of time to at least attempt to react. Like, I can understand if he tried to block it and didn't, but it's like, he just sees the, the darkness coming, and he's like, I, I uh -oh. guess I'll have a scar now. So I haven't touched this since last, unlike previously where I spent a lot of time in between recording sessions playing this, I haven't touched this since last time, despite the fact that it's been almost two weeks. Yeah, that I haven't being, even touched it on my own time. I should, I should be clear to the folks in the audience, uh, we're going to run around and do gummy ship crap for a few minutes here, but we will be getting into, like, well, don't, before the end of this episode, we'll be starting the final okay. world. Don't skip, because we have a lot of important stuff we need to talk about. Um... First thing being that um, uh, I now generally have the outline of everything that's going to happen spoiled for me. Um, like, they, like I mean, I have some details. I've seen some video, but like, and like some things, I don't know what order they happen. I don't, I don't know the details of how they happen. I don't know the semantics of how we get from one position to the other. I haven't actually seen any of the boss fights, um, but I have a general plot outline of things that are going to happen now. Right. Part of this was thumbnail spoilers and just people posting things. And eventually it did become, I mean, as you know, I don't care about this stuff too much. And I tried to keep myself in the dark. But after I knew stuff, I was like, I'm going to see what people are saying about this. And so I've, I've read, mostly I've read things that other people are saying about it. Um, people's criticism of certain things, people's praise of certain things. And again, a lot of it's vague. A lot of it's all over the place. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I have a general outline of kind of things that we're going to see. So if my reactions to certain, certain things are muted... Um, that may be why, but quite frankly, there is only, from, from the spoilers that I have, there is only one thing that I know about that I think I would have had a strong, like, YouTuber reaction to uh -huh. that I now won't have, and I knew about, that was the, literally the first thing that I knew about that. I knew about that spoiler the day before the game came out. Gotcha. So, like, that's, that's blown. Everything else that I found out about is stuff that I doubt I would have had a big big YouTuber reaction to, I think I'm just going to be able to talk about it more eloquently now because I've had some time. A, you wouldn't have been able to make a thumbnail out of out of you going, what? Precisely. As if, as if we, you know, have face cams anyway. But the main thing is that I want to, while we're running around, we need to do some gummy ship stuff anyway for a few minutes because we're in a new galaxy. There's okay. probably some of the materials we can use to upgrade our keyblades sitting around yeah, here yeah. if we blow up some asteroids. Let's go for um, it. But the main thing is, before we move on into the ending here, it's been two weeks. I've had a lot of thoughts in the intervening time. Um, we talked about some of those thoughts before we started recording today at some length, um, but we don't need to go into all of that. First things first, Joey, Hey. here we are. We've beaten most of the dis This is the different looking. Weird. Weird. Where did it spawn you on the map? I The only place that I could spawn at the one waypoint that I was allowed to come to. Okay. All right, well, this is, I guess, you know, final boss gummy ship stuff time. Yeah, you're, in, you're inside the Citadel right now. You Joey. Just pop through the Mass Effect yeah. Relay. Joey, what, um, w please share with me your thoughts on this video game so far. Okay. Before we get to the ending here, we've played through all the Disney worlds, we've had a jolly good time. What did you think of it? All right, well, first off, I want to state going into the spoiler stuff that it's been two weeks and I've not seen a damn thing about That's this game. Good. I haven't even seen people talk about this game Oops. or meme at it. I, it's just been completely devoid of all that so I've, i i'm i dare say i know less than i did last week because i don't quite remember all the details of what happened and i say last week i mean last two weeks uh sure. how i'm feeling about this game well i don't know it's tough it's like i don't like ju judging stuff uh before you know getting the full final product of it and whatnot since we haven't beaten it yet mm -hmm. uh i'm doubting that the i don't hate it at all but it's like it's underwhelming for sure I'm sure it's probably... I Actually, I don't know. I imagine it would be pretty underwhelming to a lot of the people that have been waiting for this game for a while, but I haven't really had the luxury of waiting as long as everybody else. In fact, we had the time crunch of, like, we got to get this out before the game comes out, so I had the opposite uh, reaction to it that a lot of people did. Yeah, we, there was no, like, there was no waiting, finish. there was rush. Yeah, it's like, I got to get this... We got to get this done before we can play the game. And we, we managed pretty well, I think. Like, we had to, we ended up playing, like, two hours the day of that we were going to play. Like, yeah. we played two hours of uh, zero. Yeah, 0 0.2, we had to wrap that up. We're still on, uh, not on quite on time, but oh well. Yeah, close enough. We got we got to play it that day, so I think that was a success, especially considering how we've done scheduling in the past. Sure, sure. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know. Uh, it's a mess for sure. But it's like compared to what we have been getting in the last in the, the last couple of last games, few games yeah. it was refreshing because it has every now and then when you play this you get a taste of how it once was. Also, what the hell is going on? I guess we're running into a boss here. Are we finally getting out onto the overall map here? Are we? Yeah, and then we're walking into some kind of boss here, I guess. Yeah. Uh huh. All right, the, the Colossus, Colossus pyramid. pyramid. Whoopee. All right. I don't anyway, think that's what a pyramid looks like. Uh, it's a, it's two pyramids. It's an upside down pyramid. Man, you know this reminds. I'm gonna me, have to remember all the controls. This reminds me of the pyramid ship that you get in Spectrobes, actually. Spectrobes. Let's not one. talk about Spectrobes. Okay. You can Spoiler. talk about. I'm just like. Spoiler I'm, alerts for Spectro. No, no, no. I'm just. I'm just kidding. I'm just. I'm just. It was just amusing <laughs> that we that we've now looped back to Spectro. Spectro. Uh, I don't think we talked about it all during this playthrough, but Dream Dream Drop Distance. There was quite a lot of Spectro. There, there's, there's like a whole awesome. episode that was just you talking about Spectro. Yeah, I kind of dove. And the Dino Masters game. Yeah, I was. I was sitting there thinking the other day. I was like, "What's the most obscure cosplay I could do?" And I remember there's an old man with a beard from that, and I was like, "Maybe I could do that." <laughs> Uh, but I have not pursued that, guys. Don't worry. That, that's not going to be my debut cosplay as a professional. Uh, no, getting back to this game, like I was saying, is it's it's weird because it's been so long since I've played... Well, not as long as everybody else, but it's been so long since I've played 1 and 2 and Chain of Memories, the, the, the trilogy of good games, in my opinion. In a lot of people's opinion, apparently, as you were telling me earlier. I, I, I've, I've seen, I've never seen this before, but I've just recently seen some people, and I mean, I don't know, it may just be one, it may just be like a couple of people, right? I don't know. Yeah. But I saw some people throwing around the term Kingdom Hearts Trinity, and, and other people seeming to understand what they were talking about, and I realized that they were talking about one chain of memories and two, and... I mean, I've been saying for ages that I thought they made a really solid trilogy by themselves, and again, I like Days, and I... As much as I have problems with it, and we compl and I complained about it a lot, I don't hate Birth by Sleep. I think it has a lot of good parts I to it, and it, if like, people honest, like it, it's like I, I don't, I will yeah, not argue no. with you on that one. And uh, like we've talked about before, how it's a lot easier to talk about the things you don't like as opposed to the things that you do like. Maybe it's not like that for everybody, but sure as hell is like that for us. Uh, it's like I wouldn't say that I dislike any of the games except for Dream Drop. Like I don't like that game, but everything else I'm like this is fine at least, right? I feel very similarly, honestly. Like the only one that I really actively like just dislike is Dream Drop Distance. Just the reason that I, but part of the reason why I dislike it so much is because I felt like everything about it was doing really shoddy setup that was going to reduce the quality of this game when we got here. Uh huh. And it's also, like, the way the characters were written were the main thing that I had an issue with. Sure. Uh, just because it's like, I actively don't like Sora in this game. Uh, talking about that one. Uh, and Riku is like, it's better, but... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Riku was better, but it still wasn't great. Um, but it, so, it's like, compared to... Like, compared to that, this game felt like a breath of fresh air at the beginning. Just because it was getting back to just me actually liking Sora again. Yeah. Uh, but all that being said, it's frustrating to see, like, especially with the way the worlds are structured, like, it's frustrating to see them making the same problems that 2 had, where it's just repeating the movies, like, the, and not actually, it's like, they're not adding it, it's like, you've had so many years to get it right, and they get it right with the Pixar worlds, but... And they kind of got it right with Big Hero 6, too. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. That was, that was fine. I forget that that wasn't a Pixar, that was actually Disney. I forget, I don't, like, I, don't, I, uh, know how, I don't know how much of it is, like, Disney saying, no, you're not allowed to screw around with Frozen, which is hilarious when you consider that, have you, I assume you've seen the trailer for Frozen 2 by this point, right? No, you were telling me about it. Somebody was telling me about the it. The trailer for Frozen 2 is ridiculous. It's like, Elsa's testing out her, her her like the limits of her powers trying to like control them and focus them into very specific controlled blasts anna is like doing parkour in some kind of weird dark cave she grabs a sword and attacks somebody uh um uh, christoph is remaking um uh freaking uh jurassic world <laughs> with this <laughs> freaking um riding around a moose like with chris pratt on the bike with all the all the velociraptors chasing him around and it's like, I just, I, all I can think about is, I've number one, ever since, like, years before even Frozen was announced, it was like, hey, here's the really obvious route for Frozen, have Riku run off to say, hey, what's going on with Elsa, I'm gonna go check on her. Like, they're, like, they're at the coronation, and maybe, like, in addition to just, like, ice happening, maybe Heartless attack, oh, yeah. and Elsa runs off, and Riku's like, I'm gonna go and make sure that that princess is okay, Sora, Donald, and Goofy, and also maybe Kairi, you guys stay here, 
with uh, with this princess, and Riku runs off into the yeah, mountains, and then the he's like, parallels, and because he has but... basically she has the exact same character arc that he had in two, like it's almost identical. Um, yeah. But even then, like I was just thinking last night, not last night, a couple days ago, of like, okay, here's something really simple, right, that fits uh -huh. within the structure of this game pretty easily. So you don't have to worry about the other characters being there. Post Frozen, Arendelle is in summertime now. Which will be fun, because we'll get to revisit some locations from the movie looking a little bit different. Um, Organization 13 shows up and tries to kidnap Elsa because of her ice, because she's Princess of Heart, right? However, she uses her big ice magic to fight them off. But the problem is that she can't really control her ice magic still super well, even though she kind of gets control of it right at the end of the first movie. So she creates a big ice blast, and a bunch of ice, like, shoots out of the castle. Like, there's, like when they when Sora, Donald, and Goofy, like, show up, like, a, like, tons of ice pillars just, like, shoot out of the castle, right? And, like, some people within the castle almost get killed as, like, collateral damage. So Organization 13 guys retreat because, oh, wow, tough. We'll come back with more manpower. But Elsa's like, that really wasn't the, the solution to the problem. Um, so Donald and Goofy and Sora, they're like, hey, uh, we know ice magic. We could, see, we, you know, maybe we could help you learn some ice magic stuff. Also, you've got a heartless problem around here. We're experts at dealing with heartless problems. And so you go on a little mission. Uh, Anna, sorry, Elsa is your party member and she uses ice magic. Maybe Anna and Kristoff are there as well. They don't have to be like combatants. They can just be like along. And I guess Olaf is there because Olaf has to be there because he's Olaf. Um, and uh, like either Elsa A learns more abilities as the world goes on or B the MP costs of her abilities go down as she learns to control them more. Right. And uh, and like you, you have stuff where like Donald and Goofy are like, sorry, Sora and Donald are like, hey, we learned a new Blizzard-themed situation command. It was inspired by your ice magic, Elsa, and Elsa's like, wow, my magic inspired somebody instead of freaking them out? That is a boost to my self-esteem. And then when the organization members come back and it's like Larkseen and Marluxia or whatever, you can have a boss fight with them instead of waiting until the end of the game to have a boss fight with all these people because you're just you're not trying to kill them and they're not trying to kill you. You're just trying to stop them from kidnapping Elsa, and I guess maybe Anna, whatever. Um, and, uh, and at the end of the fight, instead of having a big stupid combo attack, as, as fun as it was, the kind of the big thing where the big snowman guy, like, helped us catch the meteorite that the wolf Heartless was throwing at us or whatever. Yeah, that was cool the first time. The, the very in, first time instead, of, instead of that, you learn, finally, you learn your team attack situation command with Elsa, and you use that in the boss fight, because she's finally, like, got enough control over her powers, and you use that to scare the bosses away. And they leave, and everybody's like, thank you for helping us. And then that's the end of the world. Yeah. And everybody has a good time. But instead, we just repeat the movie poorly. And you get to see you see the bad guy's face for one frame. So this is something that I've been thinking about. A d so again, I, I want to... So I wanted to get, let you get your thoughts out before I kind of threw this around. So I've been, like... We, I mean, I think it's been obvious that we've been enjoying parts of this game. Well, while, yeah, exactly. while, while we have laughed at the game a lot, we've also laughed with it on numerous occasions. We've enjoyed things that were pretty cool. And and I don't think that I'm going to come out of this going thinking that this game is bad, even if I really don't like the ending. Like, Or maybe maybe I will like it, I don't know yet. I mean, like I said, I know stuff that's going to happen, but execution is everything on a lot of things. So there are things that I've heard about that I think could be cool. Maybe they'll be bad. There are things that sound lame to me. Maybe they'll be cool. I don't know. The point is, I've had enough fun with just, like, in the same way that, you know, as much as Birth by Sleep's gameplay has problems, it is still fun. I think this game has some problems, but it is still fun. Yeah, and from what I've played on my own time, I enjoyed the gameplay. And, like, and it's, it's not perfect because of, like, I could really feel that a lot of the fights could just boil down to press X until you can press triangle. Even Frozen World and Tangled World, which were like, I don't want to call them miserable, but they weren't really what I think we or anybody else were looking for out of those settings. Like, they still had fun stuff in them. There were still fun sequences. The, um, uh... The little Larkseen ice cavern thing on um, uh, on Frozen World was a lot of fun, for example. Um, it's like you know, I, you know, there's there's been, there's been fun stuff, is the point, right? It's oh, been yeah. it's been enjoyable. Um, so I don't think there's any way that like this ending can be so bad that I'll just go, oh, it's a bad game because I, we've I've, we've had fun and we've played it. And it's been enjoyable, but yeah. so far my feelings are very similar to Final Fantasy 15, where it's like this is enjoyable, but not great. But the problem is that 15 was mostly carried by how much we just really liked the main characters and their relationship with one another. And while Sora is better than he's been for a while, I'm, ain't, ain't no Final Fantasy 15 oh, no. bro road trip feelings from this game. No, maybe it could have been that. 
you know. And that's what I mean. Like again, if, if we had any screen time with when Sora, Riku, and Kyrie together, I, I keep looping back to like I mean the ending of King the the, the sequel hook of Kingdom Hearts two is Sora, Riku, and Kyrie are all going to go on an adventure together now. But then we got so busy with all this other stuff that there was literally no room left in this game for the sequel hook that the vast majority of lapsed fans who are coming back to this will care about. Like, you know, you know how much fan art I've collected over the last couple of years of people going, oh man, I haven't thought about Kingdom Hearts 3 in years, but I'm super excited for 3, is their caption on their, you know, Tumblr account or whatever. And then a drawing of Sora, Riku, and Kairi. <laughs> <sighs> Well, and it's like, I, I really want to know, like, I want to hear from those people, like, what the, how they're feeling about this, from the very casual observers. I don't know, I mean, I feel like to the casual observers, then, like, if they, if they aren't too invested in this, then maybe they're not going to care about a lot of this other stuff. They just kind of, you know, oh, whatever, it's dumb, but it's enjoyable. I just had fun with my characters that I like, right? But, I mean, yeah, and then, and then you go, where are the characters that I like? They're not here. Even if you like Birth, like, I mean, so far, we are at the end of the game here, and if you're a big Birth by Sleep fan, Aqua showed up said, I'm gonna save Ven, failed, Sora saved Ven, and then Ven saved Aqua. Yeah. And I mean, we, I mean, granted, game isn't over yet, but how much more time can we really squeeze into this of these characters doing stuff, right? And I mean, we're at the home stretch. I mean, I don't know, who, who knows how long this ending sequence is gonna be, but the main, the main thing that I came to is like, okay, so we've been enjoying Toy Story World, Monsters, Inc. World, and Big Hero 6 World. We had a lot of fun with those, right? Yeah. Especially, I feel like Big Hero 6 was kind of mixed, but I think we really enjoyed Monsters in particular. Yeah, yeah. Like, it felt like there was, a, there, there was a real sense of urgency to it with the music and just running forward all the time, and there were fun interactions with the characters. And Toy Story was also pretty good. I'm going to loop back to something we actually talked about way back during the Kingdom Hearts 1 playthrough, which was the canceled Kingdom Hearts 1 television show, right? There was a television show that was being developed for it back in the early 2000s after just the first game was out. And it got canned for a number of reasons, I'm sure. They said the main reason was, oh, we don't want to disrespect... Supposedly, the reason that the director gave was that the studio said that they didn't want to risk disrespecting or trampling on the toes of the developers who were developing a sequel. I imagine it was, that was probably not really the reason, but whatever. Um, the only reason that we know about the show is because a couple of years ago, the director of the pilot, a guy named Seth Kearsley, basically came out and posted some, like, hey, here are some old storyboards from this television show for Kingdom Hearts that I was working on. And people were like, what? What? And so suddenly the internet has been, swarms him with questions about this project, right? And so basically the story, the story as he tells it is, uh, he was basically working on nothing, uh, spending a lot of time playing Grand Theft Auto 3, because it was that time, it was that time of the year, that time of the decade, I should say. And people called and said, hey, uh, you want to come work on this Kingdom Hearts thing? So he gets Kingdom Hearts 1, and he plays it, and he loves it. And he's like, this is perfect. This is, um, not, not, the, not the game is perfect. He's like, this is the perfect project. Because yeah. he said, I wanted to, he was talking about how, like, at that point in time, he wanted to make something that was, quote, more real American anime. He wanted to make something that had a bit, he wanted to make a cartoon that had a bit more weight to it. And so he, go, he plays the game and loves it, and he goes in to work on it. And they have a script for the pilot. And he says that it basically, he said he was very disappointed in it because it, I want to be clear, like, as if this guy's some kind of, like, authority on Kingdom Hearts. He played the first game and enjoyed it. I'm not saying that he's, like, you know, the master of Kingdom Hearts. He's just a guy. But just hear, hear me out, to be clear. The, I gotta, I get, let me get to the end of the story before people think that I'm somehow going to, like, put the weight of the world and the quality of Kingdom Hearts on some guy's shoulders. Um, he comes in and reads the script. And uh, supposedly... He says that it basically reads like an episode of the Aladdin TV show that just has Sora, Donald, and Goofy like guest starring. And he essentially said, this is not, this isn't, this isn't what the game is. This isn't what the show should be. You're like, you're missing the point. So he basically rewrote it and turned it into, even though it takes place on Agrabah, Aladdin doesn't even show up. Jafar only appears very briefly. And it's basically about, you, you introduce the idea of Sora's backstory of his islands were destroyed. He's missing his friends. He's on a mission with Sora, Donald, and Goofy, right? We get that kind of out of the way with a dream sequence in the beginning. They go to Agrabah. Maleficent sends Riku to Agrabah to retrieve the magic lamp because she wants it, because wouldn't you? Um, and so uh, they fight some Heartless. They bump into Riku. They're like, oh, hey, Riku, it's you. Hi, how you doing? But then, uh-oh, Riku, being evil, tries to take the lamp. Little bit of a fight. Riku leaves. Sora's a little bit melancholy about the situation. Um, uh, Maleficent scolds Riku for failing to acquire the lamp very evilly, right? Yeah. This is approximately what he's l outlined. He hasn't really told us that much about what the pilot looked like. Um, but the point is, we enjoyed the Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. and Big Hero 6 fairly well. They were fun. They were enjoyable. We had a good time with them. And then I was like, 
but if you read it, it reads like an episode of a Toy Story World or a, or a Big Hero 6 World or a Monsters, Inc. like TV show. It reads like an episode of one of those in which Sora, Donald, and Goofy are guest starring. Yeah. It is... The, 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 the best parts of this game are parts that someone else after the first game would have said, this is missing the point of Kingdom Hearts. And that was all those years ago. And I kind of and I kind of realized that after we stopped filming last time, and I've been thinking about that for the last like two weeks now. And that doesn't mean that doesn't stop me from having enjoyed those sections of the game, right? But I feel like those sh th those should have been the low points of this is still really good, but or this is still good and enjoyable, but not as good as the rest of the stuff. But that was instead the best part. Mm -hmm. And I just I don't know. I mean I don't know how much of it is. Disney, you know, stepping on their toes of, you know, what they are and aren't allowed to do, and how much of it is just a, a lack of interest in those sections of the game. Because, it, I mean, it sounds like Tangled is in this game because the staff said we wanted to have her fight with her hair and have little interactive bits where she runs around and you chase her and you do little ra interaction scenes with her. That's that's why it's in the game, is because the staff, like, pitched we want to do that. Yeah. Which then creates this image in my brain of Tetsuya Nomura going, Okay, staff, that's fine. Now you figure out the other 80% of the game, and I'll go back into my office and work on the 20% of the game that I care about. Which is the part we're about to get to. Yeah. And I guess technically like the little interval scenes, but... <sighs> I don't know, man. I mean, we'll see. We're not at the end yet, but... No, but... Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get wild. Maybe we'll have our YouTuber reactions. There was, um... I can't believe this game was the best game of the year. The, uh, the... I'm not gonna talk about it all right now. Hopefully a video pertaining to this will have come out by the time that this releases, like, three months from now. But I read you a script for a video that I'm working on that's kind of, like, analyzing Tetsuya Nomura's work and kind of looking at it through the lens of auteur theory. And it's like, I feel like I've come to understand him a lot more by playing this game. As I, you know, as inter as kind of as ironic as that kind of is, mm -hmm. but I'm just like I, I just feel like he doesn't want to be working on this. Like there, there's so little of this game that interests him on a personal level. I thought it was pretty explicit that he didn't want to be working on this at this point. I don't know. I mean, you said you read me to quote where he said he was pouring all of his anger into this. Pouring game. all of his anger and hatred into this game, and Sora is now like my enemy. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much more explicit than that, in my opinion. Other than him coming out right and saying, "Yeah, I don't, I don't care about this project." I don't know. I mean, I, it's hard to say. What is, by the way, what is the deal with these giant purple ones? Because in my world, I found one that I just could not destroy. Maybe, it like maybe it I can't one. destroy it. That's weird. I've destroyed every one of these that I've come upon so far. Maybe I need more firepower, or maybe I just was stopped two shots short of getting it. I don't know. But like, there is a there is this treasure sphere over here, and I want that, so I'm gonna get that, and then we'll probably move on in a second here. But it's. To me, it's, um, like, the, the big thing that I realized kind of recently looking at all of this is I've been saying since 2012, this Dream Drop Distance thing is dangerous because we've basically set up a situation where we have outlined everything that is going to happen in Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Which just, yeah. like, to me is, like, that really is going to increase the risk of Kingdom Hearts 3 being kind of boring and predictable because we've, we've basically said, okay, this is what has to happen in the game, right? Now, now, either A, we're going to know exactly what's going to happen, or B, the entire thing is going to be predicated upon 11th hour massive twists that subvert the multiple $40, hour, $40 games that people have paid for that said this is going to happen. So it's just a it's just a shoddy position to be in. It's kind of risky. And, and I think the revelation that I came to is looking at Tetsuya Nomura's work, looking at what he said he's interested in from a writing standpoint... I realized that what he's really interested in most is subverting tropes, subverting expectations, going outside of what are considered to be kind of the norms of writing for, like, fan... Like, one of the big things he talked about with Versus 13 was how he wanted... He did not... He was like, I did not like how other Final Fantasy games... They, they were not written the way that I would have written them. I want to do something that, you know, explores more realistic psychology for characters. I want to subvert anime tropes and storytelling tropes of JRPGs. And it's like, but he's stuck in the tropiest of tropes making a Disney video game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I get this distinct sense that 
now he's set now like I had previously been going oh no dream drop distance this is risky because this could damage the general flow of you know the, the the product for us the audience could make things unexciting and predictable but then I realized wait a second he's been writing all of these games like dream drop distance birth by sleep whatever essentially on the side while working on Versus 13 and Final Fantasy 15 before getting canned and coming to work on this full time. And it was only recently that I realized, oh crap, not only is all this setup bad for us as the audience, potentially, it's bad for him as a writer because now he's looking at these games that he's written and he's sitting down to write KH3 and he's like, wait a second, I have already outlined exactly what's going to happen, which means that all the things that are interesting to me as a writer, subverting expectations, doing weird and uninteresting things, I mean, not weird and uninteresting, weird and unexpected things. <laughs> I can't do them now because I said that I'm going to do this. Oh, no. Well, now it feels like, and people have been saying this for a while as the mobile game has been going on, and I haven't beaten this game yet, but I've been hearing this sentiment going around a lot that this game doesn't wrap anything up. It's just set up for KH4 that I get the distinct sense that his attitude was, oh, crap. Now I can't do anything surprising with 3. Time to make a mobile game to set up Kingdom Hearts 4 and then cram a bunch of that stuff into K like wrap up all of wrap up all the plot points that I have to in KH3 and get them out of the way so I can get back to writing something weird and unexpected. And I'm I just honestly, I like Tetsuya Nomura. I think he's a talented guy, like legitimately. I'm not saying that sarcastically or to save face but I don't think he should be working on this franchise anymore. Because I, I think that, like, he's not comfortable with the Disney censorship and oversight on it. So the one area where he feels like he can do weird and subversive things is not in the realm of the characters, or the plot, or the content of the game, but instead just in the lore and the facts. Because what Disney censor is going to care about the fact that the villain is 13 versions of himself time traveling to make a weird thing to get a weird... They're not gonna care about that as long as Mickey doesn't say a swear word and there's no sex, right? Yeah. But all the other stuff is a lot more risky and we gotta go through layers of approval. I don't know, man. I just, I like him. I like his work. I think maybe he's not the guy who should be working on this franchise anymore. Maybe we should, especially because then I think about like, we've talking about this before as well of like, the guy spends basically like 10 years of his life working on Versus 13. Takes takes all, basically he spends six years of his life working on Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and 2. Mm -hmm. And he has a core staff that he's working, you gotta think about this from Tetsuya Nomura's perspective, audience. Think, think, because Joey and I were talking about this earlier. Put yourself in his shoes. You spend six years working on uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and Chain of Memories. And you do that mostly with the exact same core staff of people. A couple of people leave to go, like, Jun Akiyama leave to go work on uh, Final Fantasy uh, 12. But for the most part, you are working with the same folks for, like, six years. You build a lot of camaraderie over that time. He takes all of those people, including some folks that left to work on other projects, like Jun Akiyama, to go work on Versus 13. Then... All of those guys proceed to have to twiddle their thumbs or toil away on pre-production for like six years until like 2011, 2012 times when they finally actually get to really start digging into Versus 13, right? Meanwhile, he hands off Kingdom Hearts to... Why can't I get this? He hands off Kingdom Hearts to uh, like basically a completely different staff that really hasn't worked on anything else before, right? Why? <laughs> Forget it. No, you're already here. I'm not. Keep talking. Give me the remote, I'll do it. He, um, he, you know, hands off these other projects, some of which are outside, like, company mandates. Like, you know, it sounds like Coded and, and uh, Days were not his ideas. And then everything else, he's, he's talked about, like, he always picks... He said in interviews that he picks the hardware before he comes up with the concept for a game. He's like, I want to make a game for the PSP, that's an interesting piece of hardware. Yeah, yeah. I want to make a game for the 3DS, that's an interesting piece of hardware. And so he's working on all these things as basically like side projects, while his big, bloody, M-rated, breaking people's arms and using them as human shields to absorb bullets, Passion Project versus 13 is going nowhere. And, and then that project gets taken away from him, they give him Kingdom Hearts 3, and they also say, hey, 
remake Final Fantasy VII, which is going to be multiple parts and probably take upwards of 10 to 15 years of his life now. I'm thinking about this and I'm like, if I'm Tetsuya Nomura, the next 10 to 15 years of my life are the completely thankless and impossible to satisfy anybody task of remaking Final Fantasy VII and working on more Kingdom Hearts games where I can't do any of the stuff that I'm actually interested in doing as a storyteller. I would legitimately, like, I would want to hand off Kingdom Hearts to somebody else so I could free up my second slot to work on something I actually, like, could do whatever I wanted to do with. Oh, yeah. You can still make Kingdom Hearts. He can even still be on, like, as a creative consultant or a co-director or, you know, lead. Still, he can still be the lead character designer for whatever new characters pop up. You know, like, he can still be involved on it. I really think that, like, I mean, maybe this is sacri sacrilege. People are not going to like me saying this because people like Tetsuya Nomura. But that's what my point is. Like, I like Tetsuya Nomura, too. I honestly like him. I Let like him a lot of his work. Thing. Yeah, don't so, keep so don't keep shackling him. Precisely, free him from the chains of this franchise. Let him do something that he really wants to do, and I will probably love that product and sing its praises from the highest mountain. But free him from this and let other people do this now. Whatever. We've been going through old gummy ship stuff for almost thirty minutes now, but I feel like I feel like we needed to preface all of that before we get into the final world here. Of like, we needed to talk about our feelings so far. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's fair. And also, I need to get it out. Needed to get out all of that other stuff. I also want to point out really quickly. He's gonna do the U-turn here. The bottom of the world is the uh, is the is the chairs, the oh, organization thirteen uh, chairs. I, I just that. noticed that. I missed that. Why is I, Kingdom Key there? Uh, because why wouldn't it be? Okay. What are the other big keyboards there? The I don't know. Giant spectral ones. Oh, who cares? I'll look later. <laughs> oh man, this photo still doesn't make any sense because that world doesn't exist, or does it? Did he have it? He didn't even have a cell phone when he took that picture. I know. Oh well. Man, maybe I wish that was my MySpace profile picture. It was me standing in the water. Maybe that's an artist's rendition, right? Maybe. He paid, maybe he paid somebody to make that for him. Like, I had this weird dream once. You know Sora wouldn't pay for commissions. He'd say, well, why don't you, why don't you just draw? Why don't you do it for free? Friendship. Friendship. We're don't, friends, don't aren't we? We're friends. You'll draw for free for me, right? Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> Be excited. I'm not. I'm trying not to go into this hot because, like, I want to give it a chance to impress me. But I'm just like, man... <sighs> okay, here we go. Let's do it. It's time. The Keyblade Graveyard is up ahead. Aren't you in it right now? Aren't there Keyblades behind you? <sighs> do... Do Sora and the crew even know what he's talking about? No. No, they read, they read the Wikipedia entry on the gummy phone. Oh, you're right, my bad. Oh, there he is. <sighs> he hasn't shown up yet in the whole game. This is his first Has appearance. he not? No, he hasn't. Oh my god, you're right. We saw the young version of him talk, playing oh, with Eric, but that's yeah, it. Yeah, I would have recognized if he was vain if we'd seen him before. Yeah, no, I saw. I've seen the renders of him with the veins, and I was like, I don't like this. Legend that's has weird. That darkness once covered the world. We know so little about the Yeah, this is the new this is the new actor. Uh, I was about to say this was not the voice I was expecting. Oh no, this was in trailers and I was like, really? No, I like his other voice. With another keyblade. Now he's just saying the things that he said to Ericus. When the darkness falls, we'll when the darkness falls. <laughs> the precious light the legend speaks of. Why didn't they get the other dude? Did he die? All, all yeah, Leonard Nimoy died. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was Leonard Nimoy, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, God, I forgot. Did that gummit. The no! The Japanese voice actor died, too. I've, so I found this out recently. The Japanese voice actor for Phil died. So they didn't recast him. So that's why Phil's there but doesn't say anything. So why is Phil there? Because why wouldn't he be? Um, but, uh, so apparently... I didn't know this detail. I knew that the guy who voiced Xehanort also voiced Old Snake in Metal Gear Solid 4. What I did not know... Because, again, recasting people is such a big thing in Japan that they don't like. Um, the, the guy who voiced Old Snake was the father of the guy who voices Solid Snake and, oh. and Big Boss. And so apparently, in the Japanese version of this game, they got his son to voice Young Xehanort. It's his voice Xehanort in this game, I mean. Huh. Not Young Xehanort, my mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young Xehanort was voiced by somebody else, but they got, they got the son of the guy who voiced Master Xehanort to voice Master Xehanort in this out of respect. And then I assume... They sought to find an English voice actor who sounded like that, as opposed to just finding an English voice actor who sounded like Leonard Nimoy. Whoa, I, I that's that's cool, but also a shame. Because no, I I'm agree. Not a fan this, of no, this dude at all. no, this is a. I know. Listen, 
<laughs> this is a mistake, and I don't like it. See. But whatever. Yeah, now and now Zem disappears. Yeah, there you go. Come on, there you go. But first, your light shines far too brightly. It must be extinguished in order for the truth to be seen. But what? Don't you want us here for the war? Isn't this part of your plan? Yeah, yeah, establishing shots of guys. I know them. Uh huh. Only when your hopes have been broken by battle upon battle can the key be claimed. His the delivery as Vanitas is really different in this. Yeah. You know, it's like not it's not as low key as it was in Birth by Sleep. He's just like, ah, it's me. I'm Vanitas. It's kind of different. He forgot how. It's been a few years. He doesn't care. None of these people care. Why would you care? Yeah. Maybe that's an unfair characterization, but look at how many there are. Oh, oh. Remember the Battle of a Thousand Heartless, Sora? Okay, gang. Get ready. I remember. I remember. <laughs> Wait, is this actually gonna be the Battle of a Thousand Heartless 2 Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, and this was in trailers. I'm not surprised by that. Okay, I haven't played this game in two weeks. So let's see how this goes. That's fine. Listen, dude, just spam magic until you get the big magic. That's what I'm. That's my plan. Is. Uh oh. Actually, no. Those guys gave you a problem. But the the Toy Story. They did. It's not true. Toy Story Monsters Inc. Boys. Uh huh. The unversed guys. But I think that might do the trick. Yeah. Wow. Those aren't enemies. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. This is actually probably gonna be good for this fight. It will absolutely. I love that the music changes. Remember when the music changed during the Aqua fight, too? That was amazing. Really helps with the drama. I still haven't even hit my record number of hits yet. Look, see? There we go. Finally got a new record. Yay. I was like, how can I not have gotten a new record yet with all these Heartless here? But whatever. I just realized that there's an enemy's bar. Oh, man. Yeah, this is... Just, this, this is great. Oh, okay, so that is, those guys on the outside are not real enemies. They are a boundary to push me back in towards real enemies. I just realized that. Oh, yeah. No surprises there. No, but sure, I, was, I thought maybe the, I thought maybe at least, like, the edge of them would be enemies, but they're not. Gotcha. Ah, oh, well, whatever. I forgot how much I hated attractions. <laughs> I really did. I've, like, explicitly not been using them in my game. It's, it's such a weird thing, because, like, I remember that they talked about, like, in, in, like, that's something they're so proud of in interviews of, like, how many games, like, you know, they're talking about all the unique features of this game, and one of the things they would talk about is, like, this is a game where you can ride amusement park attract. It's like, what do you mean? Oh, man. Is hey, that a also, thing that people, like, wanted and were excited about? Hey, as you're spamming X and air juggling, look at the look at the, the regular shadows on the ground, even the ones that are right under you. Oh, boy, I see you that see frame that? rate. That's great. That's real what? good. Why, okay, why the ones right here? Okay, no, they're not real. They're not real. No, it's only the flying say, enemies. Only the flying enemies are real right now. But they're not real with their meter. Do anything that, no? Maybe? Let's find out. No. Okay, so yeah, really only the flying ones actually. The, shadow, at the shadows all. are all fake. Th this is actually less technically impressive than the Battle say, of a Thousand Heartless! Yeah, because look at them. Oh, jeez. Because now there's just a bunch of crap on screen, because at least every, everything that you saw on screen in the Battle of a Thousand Heartless you could interact with, right? Because basically, as you got close to any enemies, they became real. These are yeah. all just fake. Go, go stand in the middle and see if they can do anything at all. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is cool. worse, technically, than the battle of a thousand. And like, at least in that one, it's like, okay, I, anywhere you go, you swing, you hit stuff. You're hitting these, but they aren't real. Okay. Okay. The gauge is going down. Oh, it is. So killing okay. them does reduce the gauge, but they can't do anything to you. Yeah, and it like it really also like, the, even though there might technically be more, it's like, in that one, they did a pretty good job of actually. Uh, like, originally making it feel like everything around you was something. Like, in this, it feels like there is a bubble around you, and the bubble are the enemies that you can't get to in the background. It doesn't feel like it's actually populated in the middle. You see what I mean? Oh, like, look, you have the look, look, look at the prompt yeah. in the corner. Mountain Coaster. Great. It's, they brought it back for the one scripted oh, sequence. But you see what I'm talking about? It's like, no, there's just exactly a barrier of enemies out there, and then there's the few enemies in here. Like, it just doesn't look great. 
Well, well, mountain I think, mountain I coaster think it, doesn't even have a. No, it doesn't because it's, it's scripted. Because it's scripted. Why would it go away? All right, I figured that would be good if all those guys were actually spawned in on the map. I figured that would do a lot to the meter, but it really didn't do much. No, so. maybe you have to coaster. Maybe it's locked right now until you coaster. I don't know. I'll use coaster in a second. No, oh. because that took him out. <sighs> Who knows? Hey, you know what else was cool about the Battle of a Thousand Heartless? What? How you got to team up with all the Final Fantasy characters along the way. Yeah, that was Remember neat. that? No. Hey, you know, you know how all those other characters just ran off screen and now they're not here anymore? Yeah, you don't even see them pretending to fight in the background. Like, what, a, what a fantastic opening bid. <laughs> oh no, we're being harsh again. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh, hold on. This will do a number on him, probably. Are, you know, this, this has got to damn. This has got to do some real damage to the meter, right? Yeah. Like, how can it not? Exactly. Now, Watch the meter. I will, when, especially when you start. This doing has that. to help the meter. So back in the day when we were playing this, I was like, wow. Like conceptually, I was like, this could, this should be the best thing ever, but it's really not that great. What? The the splash thing, like the damage. Oh right, just yeah. Not good. I had some good. I had some good success with it early in the yeah. game against early enemies, and then after that, it seemed to really kind of. You did the big damage. Taper off in damage. You really just don't want to use that mountain coaster, but listen, man. I just gotta... wanted to see if we could do anything else with it. All right, yeah, man, look at that. You remember this from the trailer that we committed to before we realized that we couldn't do it? Oh, look, oh my look gosh. at that meter. Look at that. Look, took triangle to deal the final blow. Okay, so, this, yeah, you know, look... this, is visually, this is visually impressive at minimum. Like, this looks cool, but it's just a scripted sequence. Oh, man. But it really limits the feeling of there being infinite heartless here, though, because then re there really just shows you it's just a whirlwind of, of black creatures. Where did Sora, where did Riku and Kairi and Aqua and Ven and Axel and Mickey go? Where did they go? They're dead now. They're dead now. You got final blow. I got final blow yeah, with you... which to kill my friends. <laughs> I learned wow. glide. Yeah, this is good. Just give us the prompt right now. I, I bet you probably couldn't actually finish that fight without it, without the explosion. Press maybe. X after performing a reprisal to instantly move next to the target and continue attacking. That's good. That's just a follow up on your standard counters, I guess. Okay. Oh, you gotta put guard. Oh, yeah, on, yeah. Man. Of course, I forgot. I got distracted by that one. Duh. No, I was thinking about glide, but I just thought to leave that menu, which was stupid of me and a mistake. Now, hold on. I can't do. I can't do this here. Never mind. I was gonna say, did I? I didn't. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking what I got out of those asteroids. I don't even know if I got anything that I can upgrade. I know you, I got upgrade got, materials, but I don't know if I got the upgrade material that I need. Is Orichalcum? Is that what you need? Uh, did I get Orichalcum out of those? Yeah, you got... Uh, Electrum. You got That's the last Electrum. thing I need. I got seven of them. Okay. So I can max out almost every Keyblade now. Good stuff. Just grind out that stuff out of the gummy ship for a few minutes. Oh, they all went on ahead without Sora. Oh, man. Go look at those Keyblades up close. Yeah. Were those there earlier? Yeah, they were here. Okay. That's what I was saying. What do you mean the Keyblade graveyard's up ahead? It's right here. Can you jump up there, too? Let's no. But no. that's the, that that's the uh, that's the standard starter keyblade in um uh, in uh, Union Cross. Yeah, yeah. And then onto these other ones are generic ones that were just in the background in Birth by Sleep. What I'm looking for is to see if there are any of the other like hey, so this is sort of this one with the bandages on it is similar to Fenrir, which was in the background in Birth by I mean, in, yeah, in Kingdom Hearts 2's final movie, but has clearly been changed. To, now there's Fenrir, I see it. That's it. That's it right there. Just no keychain. Yeah, yeah. And some of these other ones are just the generic random ones that were featured in the movie. Okay. But they've added in a lot of these Union Cross ones, which raises the question of why they didn't just, like, Let's put, you know, see. this one, which was in the movie, into Union Cross instead of just making a new one. But whatever. Where did we get the Union oh, Cross still... keyboard? Uh, well, if we, had pre if we had played the games, we would have already gotten it, yeah. but I, I assume we must get it soon, because I've been told you do get it in-game eventually. Oh, wow. Map. On the map, on the map, on the map! Actually, just a mimic. Oh, look. Look at that mimic. Thanks. All right, so this lands. is the bad... Okay, so remembering in Birth by Sleep, it was called the Badlands first and then the Keyblade Graveyard later. So I guess we've got caves to Badlands to go through first, and then we get to Keyblade Graveyard, even though there were totally Keyblades back there. Wait a second! Wait a second? This is the ending of the game. This is the finale of the game, right? Yeah. This is the ending. Now we've got all the characters together. Now, finally, we're all here to hang out and do adventures together. We've gotten past the Disney stuff. Now we can all just be together and do adventures. Okay. Where'd everybody go? They ran on ahead. Dude. It's fine. <sighs> Grant's incredible boost in defense. I like all my... I like yeah, I all of my... Save. I like all of my stat resistances, probably. You're not gonna save? I'll save. 
Because what if it? What if it's like this is the final stretch and you can't do stuff and blah 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 blah. I'll save. I shouldn't have saved there. I should have saved in the next slot. Yeah, but whatever. It's fine. Too late now. <sighs> Great. Is, is gliding faster than running? Uh, I hope so, because if it not... It feels like it. Like, I mean, it better be. Look at all this stuff, right? Like, look at the fight that happened here of, like, somebody crouching behind this rock and people, like, throwing their keyblades at them or something, and then he bounces out and kills them all with a Mega Flare, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Like, all the, cra the Dragon Ball Z craters we saw in Birth by Sleep and just none of that happens in the cell phone game. They all just gather in a perfect formation of four squares and then they just fight each other. There's everybody. Oh boy. They're just standing here. My friends. They're not doing anything, they're just chilling. Is this the select your friends screen? Is this the Mass Effect no, 3 select No, this, this, is, this is Mass Effect 3, but it's not the select your friends screen. Oh no. Is everybody okay? Because I have, I have, I have, Precognition knowledge of things in the game, unfortunately. Now, come on, let's go. <sighs> Why did they all go on without Sora? Oh, look, it's that guy. Oh, hey, I remember him. He was in a video game, he was the first character we played. Oh, man, Tara, we found you. I guess Ven technically doesn't know. But he should have read the Wikipedia entries warning him of this, right? He can't read. <laughs> Why didn't they warn Why him? Why is he in his regular body? Because it's a fake out. Because he's gonna change. But wait, you know he shouldn't be here at all because of what gives Aqua? Maybe time travel. You're not him. It has to be time travel, right? Now let our friend go. Because old man Zaynord is here. And, no, because Xemnas and Ansem were both here. About to, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> if Xemnas and Ansem are both here... So if Xemnas and Ansem are both here, he can't be here except for... Because, because if... Hold on. Okay, so no, Xemnas and Ansem are here because of time travel. Yeah, yeah. But we killed them, which should have caused, caused this, the, the, you know, lab code Xehanort to regenerate, right? But it didn't, it caused old man Xehanort to regenerate, supposedly. Which is wrong, but whatever. So either he or old man Xehanort is here because of time travel, or possibly both of them. Whatever. It's fine. Today is the day you all lose. What? Before you even face the Thirteen, every last one of you will be torn heart from body. Then won't that cause your plan to fail? But fear not. The Keyblade will still be forged. Okay, I guess not. Never mind. <laughs> We're not I apologize. Why will it be? You. But why? Because pl the, pl the plot changed, I'm sure. Or they just don't care. Whoa. Look. Oh, Whoa. he's gonna kill him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! No, Aqua, stab him! Aqua, stab him! Oh no, Ben! Stab him with your sword! Stab! No, so, they Sora, got. Do it for me. That's it! Wow, yeah, Sora's just gonna do it. Everybody else is just standing here around! <laughs> Look at the ball of it. This is like when Shock T blocks General Grievous' lightsaber in the old 2, the 2D Clone Wars cartoon with the Force. Oh. I'm sure I'm glad Kyrie got all that combat training. No, Why don't you guys do something about it? Okay. What the heck is... Okay. Boy, this is dumb. Why don't you block it with a keyblade, Sora? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa! Step three! <laughs> Step three! No. What are you... Oh, what? No. Wait, what? What? <laughs> What? what? Rain of fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, frames were dropped. Oh, Whew. Okay. Oh, one, Lord. two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. I'm gonna have to re-get that footage later, but at least it was a cutscene, so I can, I can get, I can re put it back in there easily. Okay. What is happening? Let me restart. Let me restart. Hold on. Let me restart the audio recording for safety purposes.
All right, audio restart. Video is already rolling. One, two, three. One, two, three. Second sticks. Okay. So listen, listen. Zeta Flare okay. makes Donald the most powerful red mage in all of Square Enix. Okay. Zeta Flare has a spell that has only been performed by one other character, the third form of the final boss from one of the Bravely Default games. Oh. Who was siphoning power from a god. <laughs> I was gonna say, Donald, where where was all of this? Now earlier? to be clear, now to be clear, it does cause Donald to collapse in exhaustion and possibly die. Oh my gosh, he's got the the JoJo's like death sparkles of like the characters. The, the, dying. the trailers had Donald here, like this next shot of Donald just like falling over dead. <laughs> this was so, in trailers. So this is the goofy fake out. Yeah, this is the goofy fake out. I'm sure. Because Goofy was like, Donald, don't. Yeah. Oh, shucks. All the same, no one else in Square Enix history has even cast a Zeta level spell before this with just their standard power level. That's something else. This can't be real. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh no, it's the Demon Tide again. A boss that we fought multiple times and I don't ever want to see again. It ran it ran away in, uh, in Twilight Town, yeah? And you were like, it's we gonna be it's probably gonna be reoccurring. And then we fought it again in the Realm of Darkness. But not as Sora, did we? Yes, we did. We did as Sora? We, we beat Aqua. Or, or I, mean, I don't know, I guess only Riku did it. Right. Whatever, it's fine. I don't care. Is this the same one? I don't know. Okay, who cares? I, I think it might just... Well, I don't know, we whatever. We stand together. Uh-huh. We stand together, Aqua. That's right, Aqua. We stand together. Mickey, All right. Kyrie, Goofy, watch the others. That wasn't Sora, Donald, Goofy. No, we should all get to safety while we still can. Or just cast a cure spell. It's too late it's for fine. that. It's fine. It's too late for that, we say, as we stand here just talking. Is that another one? The state, yeah. The stakes are so high, we're just standing here talking. These are less heartless than we dealt with earlier. It's as true. Sora, it's true, they are. Donald and Goofy by themselves. Carrie hasn't even pulled out her keyblade yet, except when we started out that fight earlier. Oh no, it's combining. They're gonna combine! Oh no. This is the st The way that this we is shot and the lack of music, this is just. There's no stakes in this. Oh no, there's Heartless. We already fought a tornado in the very first world. We of did, this we game. fought, we beat a Titan in the first world of this game when Sora was level one! It can't be. What do you mean? No. It's just. It's Aqua. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh no, we'll never defeat this enemy! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah! This is why I heard about this scene. This is worse than I thought it was gonna be. This is so bad. This is like the start of World of Light. <laughs> Except they didn't even try. Yeah. Everybody in World of Light tried their best. These and characters didn't do anything. Aqua literally gave up. Right Dead. There. Like Seconds after like, saying we stand together, she just gave up. So I guess this, the music didn't tell me this was dramatic. There were just a bunch of wide shots of Heartless. Listen here, guys. Oh Colors my god. Whoa. Into Whoa. Spire of fate. Was the, was the frame on that? Frame rate on that weird? I think you're right. The frame rate on that was god. weird. Kyrie, Donald, Goofy, the king. Turn into anti form. They're gone forever now. They're all dead. You can tell by the music. What do we do? You can tell by the dramatic cinematography. Without them, I. My friends are my power, and without oh, my, my power, I'm nothing. Came from oh my god, actually. He gave me all of that it. was a joke. <laughs> Alone? There was- I can't- I- dude. Together. Listen, so again, I already know the outline of this. I knew this was gonna happen. I cannot believe that there is no music. It's over. I'm stunned. I am flabbergasted. This feels like I was listening to Spotify and forgot to turn it off, so it's just cut out all the in-game music. Oh my god. Why, why did the demon tide just stop attacking? Sora, you don't believe that. I know you don't. Is this where the inspirational music kicks in, or is it just... Was it gonna eat him too? Please just walk into it, Riku. Dang. At least Riku's gonna try. Javelin it. He's, this is, 
Oh my god, this is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Kraken. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, you're it's exactly the, it's exactly the ending of the Dead Man's Chest. Exactly, you're actually, he's right. actually doing it. Hello, beastie. Aqua didn't even try. <laughs> no, she just she, she, yeah, she actively gave up. Gave up. <gasps> Kyrie tried. She reached out for Sora and tried to grab him, and she got sucked away. Aqua did not try. What was that face? That that was Blake face from Ruby. And so, as foretold, darkness prevailed and light expired. Did we just get like a, the bad near, like one of the yeah. joke, like not even a bad ending no, in near, a ending. joke ending? Yes. And right now, the credits are just gonna sprawl up <laughs> at lightning speed. This is abysmal. This is not. This is not a good start. Listen, maybe maybe the game's just completely backloaded, and all the good stuff is about to come. I knew about that scene, and I was like, I've been hearing like, oh man, it's a holy shit moment, everybody dies. That was embarrassing. And so darkness prevails. That was so bad. Hey, isn't that- You need a new strategy. Isn't that isn't like, it, uh, shouldn't you be saying that? What? But not saying that, dude? It's like, wouldn't that be suspect? Like, why are you huh? talking like that? Why are you talking about the darkness prevailing in this academy to stop the darkness? He just said checkmate, no. and he just pulled this piece off the book to the back of the board. <laughs> Come on, that's not fair. <laughs> I know I had you. That's how chess works. This leads to the new theory that this is this is the new theory I've seen going around that none of Kingdom Hearts happened, and it's just these two role, like bad role playing. Oh my god. Okay, but then it, you didn't actually kill me. Actually, I split into two people, and no, you didn't actually kill all of my characters. Oh my I had. <laughs> but a game's no fun if you know where it's going. Says Tetsuya Nomura, but then backpedaling and realizing, oh crap! I already told everybody what was gonna happen. I told you. That you can't wait. All these stars. You can't. There's like there's like the keychains on the um uh, on the uh the key. Those those are the keychains. Comes from the past. From the key the, the standard keyblade Sunlight in Union. Sunlight comes from the Union past. Cross. Oh God. What, those are oh, the keychains on the standard Union keyblade in Union Cross. And he said some come from the past. Yep. Uh huh. Also, that's not how chess works. It's fine. I don't even play chess. I've played two chess matches my whole life. <laughs> Literally summoned more pieces. <laughs> I want to see that at a tournament. I want to see that power play. You activate the guy's like, track you, card. Yeah, the guy's like, you lost, and then he's like, no, and then he pours some pieces out of his sleeves. Hey, so guess what, Joey? You know that scene we just saw where everybody got attacked by the Heartless? Yeah. Yeah, that was in trailers. Really? Every yeah. single bit of that, except for... I mean, not every... Like, we saw... Donald falling over because he cast a big spell. Yeah. We saw Aqua and sorry, we saw we saw um uh, we didn't see Aqua and Ven because they're trying to keep that secret because that's that's important. We saw um Kyrie and Axel get wrecked by the Demon Tide as well as uh, Donald as, as well as Mickey and Goofy. Okay. Um and when we saw um Riku block the shot and then saw a scream and it was more dramatic in the trailer because it had music playing in the background and it was cut tightly. Um, Great. Uh, cool. Anyway. Now we got now we got Chaos Zero Sora.